Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to another tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to shoot uh, HDR photos on the GH4 and for those who don't know HDR means high dynamic range and what that means is we're going to take quite a few exposures with our camera so we're going to take maybe three photos you can take as many as you like but we'll probably take three photos and what that's going to do uh, one of them we're going to be taking underexposed so it's going to be dark we're going to capture all the really bright areas and the second one's going to be correctly exposed so as a whole the image will be correctly exposed and the third one is going to be overexposed so what that does is we're going to take let's just say we take three of those photos we now have one that's underexposed where we can where all the bright parts of the image are correctly exposed we're going to have a correctly exposed image where the majority of the image is correctly exposed and then we're going to have a um, really bright image where the dark parts of the image are exposed and then what we're going to do is merge them all together so we can have an image where there's nothing that's really really dark nothing that's really really bright it should be a nice uh, nice flat image and when I say flat I don't mean flat by boring I mean flat by everything looks nice everything's up to the correct levels and um, yeah so what I'm going to do today is I'm shooting a kitchen right here and we've got a lot of light coming in through the windows um, the kitchen's pretty well lit but the light through the windows when we're exposed correctly for the kitchen the light in the windows is completely blown out so it's just a big big white patch so there's two ways to shoot uh, HDR photos there's probably more than two ways but there's two ways I usually use to shoot HDR images on the GH4 uh, one of them is the camera can actually do it all itself which is really cool uh, but I tend to use the second way and that's doing it kind of manually so it takes three photos or however many photos you take then you take those files and use them in your software to combine them yourself I prefer that method because I can actually play around with them a little bit more and get what I want so HDR photos um, you've probably seen them sometimes they're like a bit over the top where they look almost fake and it's, that's pretty cool for some images but sometimes you just want a real looking image where everything's, just, everything's correctly exposed so um, whatever suits your flavor I guess but uh, I'm going to be using Photomatix Pro HDR to merge our photos but like I said I'm going to show you the two ways the first way I'm going to show you is using the in-camera method so the camera mixes those photos itself and then the second way will be um, taking those images and taking them to our computer and manually inserting them into each other you can do it in Photoshop there's quite a few tools for merging HDR photos together but I like to use Photomatix HDR I find it's really really good um, one thing I'll just mention before we get going I'll probably tell you again when we're in the menu but if you want to shoot if you want to use the method of the GH4 making the HDR image for you you have to actually make sure you turn off raw uh, raw images so in your settings um, you'll be able to when you shoot photos you can choose to shoot just a JPEG or a raw or JPEG and raw together um, you have to actually turn raw off so raw you kind of don't really need it when you're shooting um, HDR photos because you're capturing everything pretty well anyway so you know the editing might be limited just a little bit but by the time you've merged it in the software or the cameras merged it you probably lost all of that massive detail you need for you know raw photo anyway so it's kind of pointless so let's get started I won't waste any more of your time first method is going to be how to do it in the camera all right so the first thing you need to make sure is that you're in photo mode not in movie mode which is there so I use M which is complete manual you can use shutter priority aperture priority or programmed mode but I like to use manual um, especially for HDR photos because you don't want the exposure so you don't want any of your other settings changing um, during the actual shoot so make sure that's on a photo setting like I said I like to use M for manual and now I'll show you what you've got to do in the actual menu all right so here we are on our shooting screen we're in complete manual and I've roughly changed my settings so the image is nicely exposed it's telling me it's overexposed here but that's because there's a window letting in a lot of light and this is where HDR uh, comes in handy because if I was just take this photo now the kitchen's probably a little bit underexposed but the windows are way overexposed so it's a bit of a it's a really bad image if I bring my exposure up so that the kitchen's exposed then the windows are going to be even brighter and just going to completely blow out the image so this is why HDR, HDR is awesome so what you're seeing on my screen now is probably a lot brighter than it actually is so it may look blown out on your screen but it actually looks pretty decent here so what we're going to do now like I said make sure your camera is in photo shooting mode then we're going to go to our menu and in the first menu here the picture of the camera um, you can see my HDR is on but let me show you something if we go up to the first part of the menu here so one of seven and we go to picture size oh sorry not that one quality um, and we've got raw and large JPEG file saving selected there you'll see if we now go down to the HDR uh, setting wherever it is now I lost it where is it <laughs> there you go uh, it's there but it's grayed out so 
you have to actually turn off raw shooting to shoot a HDR on the camera internally. So let's go back up. We'll turn this off. So we'll just go large JPEG. And now we can go back down to HDR. We go to set and now dynamic range. So this means uh, like how far apart in exposures the photos will be. So if we click that, we can go one, two, or three. Three is probably the best one because it'll take one minus, like minus three underexposed. It'll take one perfectly exposed and it'll take one plus three overexposed. You can do auto as well, but I just do plus three minus EV. Auto align, yes. So what that does is if your camera moves slightly, it tries to align the images together. Um, if you're on a tripod, you shouldn't really have that problem, but I just leave it on anyway. So that's all there is to it. Now we're gonna do is press our, we're gonna press our uh, shutter button halfway down to get back to our, you know, this screen where you can see what you're doing. And we're gonna push it halfway down so we focus. If you're using autofocus, I'll just flick to manual. And then I'm gonna hold that down and you'll hear it take three photos. Now you'll see this little loading bar here. It's gonna merge the image into one. And that's it, that's our finalized image. I'll put that up on the screen, like a proper photo up on the screen. And you'll see that the outside's nicely expo exposed. We can see outside nicely. And the inside's nicely exposed, or pretty well. I'd probably edit that a little bit more on the computer, but that's pretty good. Uh, the next method I'm gonna show you now is how to shoot HDR images manually and then do the rest of this on the computer. All right, so to do this on the camera, we need to flick this dial on the left of our camera to the multiple exposure mode. So I'm not sure if you can see that very well. Let me try and get a better view. It's a bit out of focus. There you go. And then well, the rest is done on the menu. All right, so making sure our left dial on the top of the camera there is selected to multiple exposure mode. We're gonna go back to our menu. I'll just turn this one off. That's the one we just did. And we're gonna go to, where is it? Uh, pretty sure it's in this same menu. Auto bracket. So what this will do, this will let us take photos uh, at different exposures and single or burst settings. This is so single you can take them one at a time by pressing the shutter one at a time, but I like to leave that on uh, burst. Steps, so this is how many photos it takes and how many uh, stops apart. So this one here is gonna take seven photos. Um, one at zero, you can see there one at minus one, one at minus two, minus three. That's pretty good because we're gonna get a nice coverage. Um, and you've got all these different options to choose from here. So you can, you can do one, one exposed, one overexposed and one normal. But let's just go with the the seven. So we're gonna get seven images. One's gonna be minus three, minus two, minus one, zero. So we're gonna get seven images all exposed differently. Um, sequence, that's just which one gets taken first. That's not really concerning to me, so I'll leave that as it is. And we can go back, half press our shutter to get back to our shoot menu, make sure we're looking okay. And then same thing as before, we're just gonna half hold our shutter and then press it all the way down. And you would have just heard them, we've taken seven photos very quickly. Now make sure you're on a tripod when you shoot HDR because um, unless it's a bright day, you might get some motion blur, which you don't want. Um, but software can fix some of that, but not all of it. But yeah, if it's a bright day, you can probably do it handheld um, because it will fire off pretty quickly. But let's see our images. So here we've got really overexposed one. That's a really underexposed one. And we've got a whole bunch of images. We should have seven, whoops, wrong ones. We should have seven images here, all differently exposed. So what we're gonna do with them now, we're gonna bring them into the computer. I'm gonna show you the rest uh, on Photomatix HDR. All right, so here we are in Photomatix Pro and here are our seven images that we took before. So we've got all of our different exposures, as you can see. And what we wanna do now is just highlight all of those and drag them straight into Photomatix right here. As I said, you may be using different software. Um, Photoshop does this and there's plenty of other software that does it, but I find Photomatix uh, does give me the best results. So it's just going to show us all the photos we've loaded here and all the settings that was used. Um, and we're just going to go to next, which is choose merge options. And now there's a preset here. So we were on a tripod, so we're going to select that. Um, and what this does is it's going to try and align our images. So if we move during this shoot, um, it's going to try and align them back up. But we're on a tripod, so I'm going to select that. Um, you got more advanced settings here, but I'll just select on a tripod. We're gonna remove ghosting. We're gonna reduce noise on underexposed images because sometimes when you underexpose an image in the dark areas, you'll get a lot of noise. So we'll leave that on uh, just 100%. And we're gonna reduce chromatic aberrations. And we're gonna click align and show de-ghosting. The ghosting thing isn't mandatory, but it does help. All right, so this is where you can set up some of the de-ghosting. And I don't think there's really any in this image. So no matter where we move this, it's not gonna do too much. So I'm just gonna put it back down to zero and we're just gonna go okay. 
Now it's going to merge all our images together and show us our final result. Well, not our final result because we'll be able to play with it a little bit more once this loads. All right, so here's our final image. All of those seven exposures have been put together and that looks pretty good. Um, but what you'll see on the right side here, we've got a whole bunch of styles we can choose from and they're all just different. So, you know, this detailed, balanced, uh, realistic. Um, there's some stuff going on around this area here and there, but I think it's just paint on the ceiling that's just come up in our shot because um, of all the exposures, we can pretty much see everything. So I think that is just paint. I might be able to remove that in Photoshop, but I'm going to ignore that for this because um, normally you probably wouldn't see that kind of stuff. Um, so what you're going to do is usually I just go through. I mean, you can play with all of these settings manually here, but usually I try to find a preset I like and then I um, slowly adjust that. But there's some crazy ones in here too. So this is what I mean by sometimes HDR can be over the top. Um, some people just go nuts with it, but it can look really cool. And it does look really good for like nature images, like with water and things like that. It can look really cool. So there's just some wild ones here like that. That looks awesome, but it's just not what we're going for. Um, it may be something, if we're doing something different, it might be what you're going for. But um, I found one earlier that was called interior and that was probably the best best image it's a bit much so I really like that so I'll probably go with something like that as I said later on I'll probably Photoshop um, this ceiling out a little bit because of these marks up here and around here um, it looks like paint or something it's not it's in our photo because it's actually there um, but that looks pretty good so as you can see we're all nicely exposed here the outside you can see perfectly the windows aren't blown out like they would have been if this was just a single image and uh, what I'll probably do next, I'm not going to show it in the tutorial because it's not really part of it, but I'll probably cool down this image a little bit. It's a little bit yellow, a little bit warm. So I'll probably cool it down a little bit and then, like I said, Photoshop the ceiling. And that's about it. So now I can go to next and finish. And it's going to fuse our images together and give us a few more options we can play around with and then we can also save our image. All right, so once we're finished, we're greeted with a few more options we can change, like contrast. There's a few different presets here. Um, I'll just leave that on none. Uh, we can sharpen our image if we want to, crop it, and straighten it. Um, and I think that's about it. Then we can save our final image, which is what I'll be doing with this one. And it gives us a file name already, so we'll just save it where our other ones are. And we'll press save. And it asks here uh, what size. So you can actually save it low res, but I'll save that at full size. And I'm just going to press save. Alright, so that's now saved. So we can open our folder. There it is there. So that looks really nice. Like I said, I'll probably brighten it up, play around with it a little bit in Photoshop, but look at our other exposures compared to that. So you can tell by this exposure here, that's what got the outside, and that's why the inside's so dark. And then this one here got a bit of the darker areas again, but the outside's starting to blow out a little bit. And we should have some other ones where, like this one here, this one's extremely blown out, but it's captured all the highlights. So that's the point of HDR. It'll grab you know, the dark areas, the bright areas, and all that kind of stuff, merge them together to give you a really nice um, flat exposed image, which is really nice. So uh, I'm going to go eat some fajitas now, and I'll see you guys later. All right, so that is it. That's literally all there is to it. It's pretty easy to do. Uh, the in-camera HDR method is very handy because it's very quick. You don't have to come back and edit anything. And if you're shooting, you know, lots of, house, lots of houses or something for real estate, and you just need to be quick, it's probably a really good feature to use. Um, but I do prefer the manual method of using the bracketing and then coming into Photomatix or whatever software you want to use and then completing the edit that way. You just get a little bit more control. Um, but yeah, it does take longer, so it depends what you really need. Um, that's all there is to it. I hope you enjoyed. Please give me a big thumbs up if it helped you and please subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys soon. Thanks very much for watching.